Hello, welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new. Today I wanted to share some products and brands that I really regret not trying sooner. Some of these are favorites and I just should have tried them before I did. So this first one is an affordable skincare brand overall, Good Molecules. This is the silicone-free priming moisturizer and it's actually one of my holy grail daytime moisturizers. It's great for any skin type. You can use it day and night. I just really like it for daytime. I think why I held off for so long with this particular brand is because I had some hits and misses with The Ordinary, and I think I was just associating the two for some reason. It doesn't really make any sense, I know. But I'm glad I finally tried Good Molecules because I've had a lot of successes with the brand. This product comes to mind, though, because it is in regular rotation for me. This is actually showing up in my upcoming empty video. I've already restocked it. I have two bottles ready and waiting. The reason why I like this so much is because it provides hydration for me, but it doesn't make me greasier during the day. So I have dry textured under eyes, but my face is oily combination and I can get some surface dehydration because I'm on prescription tretinoin. And this says that it's formulated with shea butter, macadamia seed oil, and a plant derived silicone alternative to deeply hydrate smooth and nourish the skin. And for that reason, I feel like it really does span all skin types. Usually during the warmer months, I prefer a water gel type moisturizer. I just like that consistency for my particular skin type because it keeps me shine free longer during the day. But this is one that has a lotion consistency that works really well for me all year long. No matter your skin type, if you're looking for something that is very basic yet provides great hydration, uh, this just works really well and I should have tried this long before I did. Now this isn't just one product, this is a more of a category. I held off on trying glowy, radiant foundations for a long time because of my oily combination skin type. Now I have three here. I'm gonna put another drugstore one on the screen because it's really good too. I discovered it within the past year and I will have these listed down below along with everything I'm talking about in today's video as well as what I'm wearing on my face and on my body in the description box down below. I had tried some glowy, radiant foundations foundations in the past, like Armani Luminous Silk, that seem to work so well for other people, even others with oily combination skin, and they just didn't work for me. They wore off very quickly. They made me very greasy during the day. I tried a few others, and they kind of did the same thing, so I wrote the whole category off thinking I just could not wear those foundations because when you have oily combination skin, when you get shiny in your T-zone, you make your own dewy look as the day goes on, but I've discovered some great ones along the way, specifically this year, that actually give me that glowy look. They have longevity to them, and as I get shine bright through during the day, if I do at all, it's not a greasy look. They don't break down on me, they wear really well, and they do give me just a really flattering look. And as I get older, I'm 45 right now, if I get too shiny in certain areas of my face, it's just not not flattering. It emphasizes things that I don't want to be emphasized. So the glow, the shine has to be just right. It can't be too much. And these foundations have just been really nice for me. I know there are others out there, but I'm at least not opposed to trying them out, thinking that they won't all work anymore. And I'm kind of sad that it took me so long to be more open to this category. Despite the numerous raves I would hear about Tatcha skincare, I ignored them. I just thought it was probably overhyped. I had my skincare brands that I really enjoyed. I would test out other brands, but I just avoided Tatcha for some reason. And I'm not really sure what made me try my first Tatcha product, which was the water cream. I'll flash it here on the screen because mine is packed right now. We're in the middle of a move and I fell in love with it. I think it's a wonderful moisturizer. It is one of my nighttime moisturizers that I rotate. I really enjoy it in the summer when I do get a little bit more oil breakthrough. And I do like it during the day as well. Sometimes it's just one of those moisturizers that meshes really nicely with my skin. That led me to trying the cleanser that's in the blue bottle for oily combination skin. I fell in love with it. Then they launched the rice wash and I have not looked back since. This is my third bottle. Now I've had some duds 
too. Don't get me wrong, this is not a complete hit across the board for me, but I'm kind of sad that I waited so long to try Tatcha because I have had some great success with the brand overall. If you have other Tatcha suggestions, great products, I'd love to hear them in the comments or any other products from these categories. Feel free to leave them down below. I do look at and read all of the comments. I know I can't always respond to everything just because there are a lot of them, but I do read them and I take everything into consideration. But I know there's other hidden gems in this line that I have not checked out and I never would have discovered my favorite cleanser in the whole world if I hadn't checked out the brand, finally. I mean, it took me forever. Here on my channel, we talk a lot about primers and foundations and concealers. Those products that, you know, as you get out of your 20s, you start getting a little older. It's just harder to find the perfect product. You know how it is. It's just more difficult the older you get. I'm not quite sure why it took me so long to try the Laura Mercier Flawless Fusion Ultra Longwear Concealer. I had people recommend that I try it. I looked at the description. I thought, hmm, I should probably try this, but I had concealer that I was really enjoying and for some reason I thought this probably wouldn't be as hydrating as those concealers or it might be kind of equal to what I was already using so why bother? It wasn't until they sent me a shade that was way too light for me in a PR package that I finally tried it and it sat in my drawer because the shade was way too light for me. So one day I decided to use that shade as a brightener on top of my regular concealer just in the darkest points of my under eye area as an experiment. And I've been doing that ever since with that shade. It's shade 1C. It just gives a little bit of lift to that area. I don't do it every day, but it gives a little bit of extra concealing, a little bit of lift in those darkest points where you need to kind of raise that shadowy area. It's a little trick I've been doing. It sits really well on top of other concealers and it also wears really well on its own. So I decided to try and actually get a matte Match. I haven't quite found a match yet. This is shade 2N. It's a little bit too peachy yellow. Still on the hunt for the perfect match, but this is, you know, somewhat close. I do love the way this meshes with the skin. It looks very natural. It's very flattering on dry textured under eyes, and I am sorry that it took me so long to finally break down and try this. This is one of the most versatile concealers that I've tried. It's very flattering on mature under eyes, and this is one of those instances where if they hadn't sent it to me, would I have ever tried it? I'm not sure, but I'm really glad that they did and that it's in my life. I feel like the brand Kopari is a kind of under the radar brand overall. I've had some success with various products from them, but I've also had some fails. I guess you could say that about any brand. So this first product I have raved about, but it took me a little while to try it. I didn't even realize it existed for a little while. And even after I saw it, I just wasn't really sure what the purpose was. So this is the Kopari Starry Eye Balm. I think a lot of people might see this and not even realize why they need this in their life. So I have an entire video on dry under eye issues. If you suffer from cakey concealer and can't quite make things sit right with your under eye area, it just gives some tips and tricks. One of those tips is to take just a dab of coconut oil and dab it underneath your eye during your makeup step. That is what this is great for. Instead of having a whole tub of coconut oil or having to decant it and putting it in something, that's basically what this is. You can just take it on your finger and lightly tap it underneath your eye, either before you go in with your under eye makeup, whether it's corrector or concealer. You can do it in between. You can dab it on top of your makeup to refresh your makeup, but it's not just for that. You can use it on your cuticles. It's a great little treatment product. It's travel friendly, but this lives at my makeup table. It has become one of my most useful products. Although I hydrate my under eye area with eye cream during my skincare step, sometimes it absorbs so fully that I just need a little bit of something before I go in with my makeup and this gives that to me. It does help everything just look really nice and smooth and wear well during the day. Sometimes I forget to do it. Things don't look as great, but 
when I use it, it really does help the under eye area. I'm also regretting not trying their coconut body milk sooner than I did. I have very dry, kind of flaky, ashy body skin if I don't use the right body lotion. A body lotion that I swear by for keeping that at bay is Kiehl's Cream Decor, which is very pricey. Drugstore body lotions, I swear I've tried them all and none of them do the trick. My skin will always kind of revert back to what it was. I do do some chemical exfoliation, which does help, but I really have to deeply hydrate. This works so beautifully. It's not as pricey as Kiehl's. It's got a nice light sweet scent to it. It's not overpowering. So it doesn't compete with the fragrances that I'm wearing, which I love. I love how it sinks in, how my skin looks and feels. I'm so glad to have discovered another product that really does work for my dry body skin. And I'm sorry that it took me so long to find it. The first Chanel lip product that I ever tried was their lipstick in Boy. A lot of people have that. I feel like it was kind of a cult favorite for a while. It's a really pretty color, but it's kind of sheer. I would consider it almost a balm type lipstick. It didn't have a lot of lasting power, and I guess I kind of thought all Chanel lip products were like that. And so I didn't try any other Chanel lip products for years after that one. I heard rave after rave after rave about their lip duos, these long wearing bulletproof lip duos. I still didn't try them. I thought they were going to be like all the others that were super drying and just didn't wear well during the day. If you've watched my channel, you know how much I love these. I discovered these last year, which was really late to the game. And this is one of my favorite lip products on the planet. This is basically the perfect lip product for masks too. If you want something that is going to wear well, not dehydrate your lips, and stay looking good all day long, you can reapply the gloss on top. It doesn't change what you applied initially in the morning. They're really kind of magical. If you apply them the right way initially, it's not rocket science. It's very easy. I have looked for dupes that are less expensive. I have a video on that, which I will link. New products have come out since that video, and none of them are dupes either. There's something just magical about how this formula lasts and doesn't dry out your lips. And it does stay on all day. This is just such a perfect product to have a red lipstick in because red lipstick is so high maintenance, you know? Having and loving this lipstick formula led me to buying what's on my lips today, which is the Rouge Cocoa Bloom. I think that's what this is called in the shade Dream. I do want this in other shades. I just have not bought them yet. This formula is kind of a balm, nourishing, hydrating formula. It's got some opacity to it and you can see it's got some shine, but as that shine kind of wears away, you still have hydration on your lips and you still have some color. It leaves kind of a stain behind, but no dryness. I can't figure out how they have done this formula. It's a really great formula. I love a good tinted lip balm, something that has some pigment that I don't mind reapplying. I can eat and drink with this and I still have product on my lips and my lips never get dry. And when I reapply it, it's, it's easy. It's very low maintenance for a balm type formula. I have not come across a similar formula to this that leaves that pigment and that hydration. It's really just lovely. And I'm, I'm sorry, I held off on trying more Chanel lip formulas. It's really making me curious about others in the line. I've talked about Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter in other videos, but it needs to be in this one too, just because of the subject matter. I avoided this for a long time because of my skin type. I saw people applying it underneath foundation, kind of as a primer and mixing it in with foundation. And I just thought, you know, I make enough glow of my own during the day. I do not need this type of glowy tinted product all over my skin. It just doesn't make sense for me to have it. I also saw people using it just is a, a liquid type of highlighter and, and I have those. So I just thought it would be duplicating products I already had. I'm not quite sure what made me finally try it, but I did and I'm, I'm glad I did because I started experimenting with it in other ways, in my, in my own ways. So my favorite way to use this is dotting it kind of between my concealer underneath my eyes. Because it has a skin tint to it, I am in shade three by the way, it kind of blends in with my concealer and it makes my under eye area appear a little bit more flattering, which 
I need as I'm getting a little bit older. I extend that out to here so I do get a little bit of a highlighted effect too. I do all that of course before I powder so that that highlight kind of peeks through the powder and it just gives a lovely effect. I also apply it strategically to the high points of my face that I want to give a little bit of emphasis to. I like to do that underneath powder foundation, underneath liquid foundation, usually along the tops of the cheekbones, sometimes along the nose, above the brow, just wherever I'm kind of feeling it. But I don't feel the need to apply it all over my face because that would just be a disaster in my T-zone. But I've really been enjoying it in my concealer. I also apply it to the body in the summertime. It's just really pretty. But now I'm kind of sorry that I waited so long to try it because it is one of my most used products. I reach for this all the time and I wish I had had it in my life sooner. I recently shared some classic drugstore makeup that I have still been loving after all of these years. I'll have that video linked here for you if you haven't seen it. I'd love to hear some of your products that you regret not buying sooner in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button and become part of the family. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you at my next video. Bye.